Today, we're going to be talking about how to compare and contrast using a Venn diagram in a slideshow because students through year nine all the way through year teen are working on how to compare and contrast art. Specifically, we're going to be looking at formal analysis. So we're going to be talking what that includes and, and ideas of how to lay it out and what sort of things to talk about. We're going to do two examples so you can get an idea of what these look like. Remember that all of you will be building these in PowerPoint or Google Slides or Keynote. So some of the functionality may be different. Uh, some of your compositions might be slightly different how you use effects. Um, but the whole idea is just to know what sort of things to talk about and um, the detail that you want to start with. So just to make it clear for the year 10s and above, I've done the level of detail for the year nine students. I'm expecting my year 10s and above to give me far more detail. This is just a beginning for you guys, just a start, but you should be going beyond this. So keep that in mind, please. All right, let's share screen and get going. All right. So as I said, we're talking about compare and contrast. With formal analysis, we are trying to look at things like the elements of art and design, which are listed here, the principles of art and design, how an artist uses light in their piece, how an artist employs composition to create a strong piece of artwork, the type of art that they're creating, the materials they might use, and the atmosphere or message of the artwork. Now we're gonna look at the first two pieces, which are Edwin Holgate's Susie from 1921, and Peggy Nicol McCloy's Young Build the Window from 1941. Now, looking back and forth at these images, you can see some similarities and some differences, but we're going to talk about those in more detail. So to start off, both pieces are of similar size. You can see that they're both uh, approximately, you know, a little less than a meter, a little bit more than half a meter, so they're roughly the same size. They both have very visible contour lines. Both artists use very strong lines across the edges of almost every figure within the um, piece. They both feature a young woman, though of different ages, they are both younger women. And both artists used oil on canvas to create their artwork. Both pieces are figurative. They include people, so they're figurative. Now, Holgate's painting, Susie, uses muted and natural colors. Whereas McCloyd's painting uses very bright and unrealistic colors, which is more of a fitting of the younger age of the uh, character within her painting. Um, Holgate creates the illusion of form through the use of value and shading. Whereas McCloyd creates the idea of form through perspective. We can imagine the actual shape and um, solidity of these objects because of the layers of perspective within her piece. There's a depth of image because of the perspective looking out the window. You can imagine that, that building continues on past the windowsill. It gives you the perspective and the idea that there's a street in between. We are able to fill in those gaps because of the perspective she employs. Whereas Holgate's is a very shallow image. The wall is almost directly behind the sitter and it's very limited space. McCloyd uses a reverse L composition. You can see the window frame in her painting is an L along the outside. Whereas Holgate uses sort of a triangular balance. Okay? You can see that there's a triangle formed by the spread of her arms up to her head and almost up to the chair behind her as she's leaning forward. Um, the piece that Martin employed is very energetic. You can feel that from the wonky lines and things like that, that there's sort of the city. Whereas Holgate's is very contemplative. Okay, if you look at the expression on her face, her eyes aren't closed. You can just see her pupils looking out. You can imagine this sort of resignation. McCoy's pieces piece has multi-figure. There's many different people in it. Okay, it's not just the girl in front. There's all the other figures in the back. Yes, they're less detailed, but they're still there. Whereas Holgate just has the single figure. We can imagine Susie just sitting there by herself. We know someone else was there because they painted her, but we can imagine her by herself. Um, there's very hard edged lines, not always, but predominantly throughout McCloyd's piece. Okay, you can see that through the straight lines, okay, the very rectangular and precise lines of the building. Whereas 
the lines in Hogan's piece are very soft edge. There's lots of curves. Hogan's piece also uses very textured and feathered brush strokes, as opposed to McCoy's piece, which doesn't have that kind of effect of the brush strokes. McCoy's piece does have this very contrast use of colors. In the girl's world, because of her hair and because of the color of the windowsill, her world is all yellow, whereas everything outside has these bright reds going on. So you can imagine this distinction between um, what her world looks like versus the rest of the world looking out her window. And there's a real emphasis on the young woman's face and emotions in Holgate's piece. Whereas in McCloyd's piece, we can't actually focus on anyone's faces. They're, they're unclear. Next, we're gonna look at Jack Shadwolf's Voices from 1986 and Kazu Nakamura's Forest from 1974. Both these pieces were created about 10 years ago. Nakamura's piece was made with oil paint, whereas Shadbolt's was done with acrylic painting. Nakamura's piece uses um, abstracted lines to create the impression of trees, hence the title forest. We imagine we're looking at trees, this is probably pine trees. Um, the forest may look almost bare, but um, there is a lot going on there. Um, figurative. For Jack Shadwell, there is a figure in there. The mask may not be a person, but is the idea of a person. And the animals and the creatures are sort of that idea of figures and people as well. There's very hard edged lines within Nakamura's piece. Okay, everything's very precise. You can imagine him painting that maybe with a palette knife to get those very exact lines. Whereas Shadwell definitely used soft lines, his lines blurred together. There's no clear distinction where the line is because the edges and the way the paint has mixed has caused this very soft effect. Nakamura piece was created on a single panel. It was a single painting to be seen by itself or with others, it doesn't matter, but it was a single piece. Whereas Shadwell's piece was created on three panels. It's triptych. The three canvases have to go together. If they were separated from each other, it wouldn't be the same piece. It would be something entirely different. Um, both pieces include forests, although with Nakamura it is the entirety of the image. In Shadbolt, it's the background. You can see in the back there's a tree line. There's emphasis through the use of more white on the central panel that draws your eye towards the masks, the eye, and the nose in Shadbolt's piece. Whereas in Nakamura's, you've got this sort of rhythmic composition, the unified composition through overlapping features. In both pieces, the artist has used whether it's lines or creatures and shapes, they overlap each other and that creates sort of this unified field as you look at things. Uh, the central composition uses leading lines to draw your eyes towards the center. That helps with the same effect as the white um, in the central panel. Uh, there's a use of form and that's done through the use of value. The same as uh, was the case with Holgate in the previous comparison. Uh, we get the impression of the physicality of what we're looking at because the artist has used shading. Whereas Nakamura's piece is very flat, very two-dimensional, although there's a range of values there with the different types of blues and greens and yellows, um, it looks flat, it looks impenetrable, almost like a net. Both pieces are expressive, expressive in different ways, expressing different emotions, but expressive nonetheless. There are smooth textures throughout uh, Shadbolt's piece. There's an implied rough texture in Nakamura's painting. If you look at the painting, it doesn't actually physically look particularly rough. I don't imagine that if you were to, you know, ever run your fingers over it, you would feel a lot of texture. But you can see the blocky style of the brush strokes, which kind of like creates this implied rough texture. Things use uh, quite a bit of green across the image. Um, there's a very activated negative space through Shadbolt's piece. Um, in his piece, the creatures and they layer and they overlap one another and they really fill the voids. Um, so you don't really get the feeling that any part hasn't been used, but yet we know from the X composition, so the X structure of the mask, that there definitely is um, a section that's the foreground and a section that is the background. The background has that tree line as it were. Um, whereas Nakamura has very little negative space. He fills almost the entire canvas with his lines. Um, there's movement through the painting. You can imagine the whale kind of continuing forward. Um, whereas if you look in Nakamura's, it just doesn't have that same sort of movement, but it does have a sense of rhythm, as I mentioned before. 
So now when you're creating your slides, um, some of you, as I said, might create in Keynote as I have done, or you may have done it in uh, Google Slides or in PowerPoint. But the big thing is a Venn diagram is two overlapping circles. Now, if you're in year nine, you will know how to do this because we talked about this when we were doing photo editing and negative space a couple of weeks back. Um, but for the older students, um, all I did was use photo editing software to change the images into circles and I decreased the opacity. Not too complicated and you don't have to do it like this, as I said. Remember, everyone's work will look different, but you should be using a Venn diagram because visual organizers are a really strong way of defining what you're trying to say about the similars and differences and getting to the point without being overly wordy.